A couple years ago, my roommates and I drove along a freeway that was on fire on both sides of it for miles. We drove past palm trees that were engulfed in flames and homes that had to be abandoned. It was terrifying, but we didn't have many other options. This was Santa Barbara during the Thomas Fire, which at the time was a record-breaking wildfire in California. The sky, which was usually bright blue and sunny, was now a dark grayish red with a red hole where the sun was supposed to be. After we returned, it began to rain. We were thankful at first because at least that meant that there wouldn't be any other big fires happening again soon. But rain following wildfires like the Thomas Fire can cause huge mudslides. And that's exactly what happened. Why does this happen? What are some ways to address it? Find out in this episode of our Planet Theondo mini-series on climate justice. First, let's get some background. How is climate change related? Climate change creates droughts. Warmer conditions means that evaporation happens faster, including the moisture from the ground. And dry soil means that plants will die more. Dead plants are basically just fuel for fires, so wildfires are a lot more common. Besides creating hotter and drier conditions, a change in climate also means changing atmospheric rivers. Atmospheric rivers are basically just streams that run through the atmosphere. These rivers influence rainfall, so as they change, precipitation patterns change too. So some areas may be getting drier because of the increased evaporation, and also because they're not getting much rain anymore. In other cases, areas may be getting drier, but may also be getting way more rain than they usually do. So where do mudslides and flash floods come in? Dry soil can act like a water repellent. Have you ever watered a dry plant and seen how the water kind of just beads on top for a while instead of absorbing? This partially has to do with water surface tension. Water molecules like to be close to each other, and the ones on the outside, or the surface, don't have many neighbors, so they hold on tightly to the ones that are around them. It's like when you're doing a big group hug. If you're on the inside of the group, you're just kind of there. But if you're one of the people on the outer layer, you're holding on tight to everyone around you. In addition to the water surface tension, dry soil has the effect of adsorption, where the material actually puts up its own surface resistance. Adsorption means that the water particles will just stick to the outside of the soil particle, instead of permeating it. As long as there's some moisture left in the soil, it can absorb water much easier. So in a way, when soil's too dry, both water and soil are kind of snobbish and just don't want to interact with each other. Rainfall after a drought or after a wildfire can be really dangerous. Rather than being absorbed into the earth, most of the water will just flow off of it and take with it everything in its way. This is what causes mudslides, like the one that happened in Santa Barbara after the Thomas Fire. So what does this have to do with concerns about justice? In many areas in the United States, High-income retirees and other similar groups are moving into wildland areas as they want to live in a natural setting. This is causing an increase in the Wildland Urban Interface, or the WUI. This population growth in the WUI is concerning because the majority of the wildfires in these areas are caused by humans. But these newly moved in affluent groups aren't the only people living in these areas. There's also working class and other disenfranchised groups that are living there. These are the people who are more likely to face high losses from wildfires because they're less likely to be able to mitigate for damages. And some research has already confirmed that there's a positive correlation between wildfire risk and social vulnerability. Tons of areas around the world are facing these kinds of issues. South Sudan is hot year round with a dry winter and a rainy summer. And while average temperatures are already increasing around the world, it's predicted that the temperature in South Sudan will increase two and a half times the amount that global temperatures do. But while that's happening, they're also facing higher and higher rainfall in the coming years. Last year in 2019, there was a flooding crisis that affected over 900,000 people and resulted in over 73,000 tons of cereal production loss. There's no one solution fits all for preventing things like flash floods and wildfires, but there are some things that can be done to reduce an area's risk. For example, indigenous people all over the world use prescribed burns to keep ecosystems healthy, and therefore it reduces the risk of devastating and uncontrollable wildfires. Prescribed burns, or traditional burning, helps to reduce the amount of dead vegetation and prevents plant overgrowth that would otherwise just serve as fuel for wildfires. Indigenous knowledge about the land guides how and when these burns are used. So when fires do happen, they're smaller and easier to handle if they need to be controlled. If this pandemic has shown us anything, it's shown us the importance of planning ahead and being proactive. If you want to be proactive to protect our planet, everyone, and everything on it by continuing to learn about topics like this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. This is Evelyn reporting for Planet Diando. Thanks for watching.